all of the action from the South African Triathlon Championships, the ITU World Para Triathlon event and the ATU African Champs is proudly brought to you by Buffalo City, the National Lottery Commission, Tribal Triathlon and Triathlon South Africa. It's a warm welcome to the east coast of South Africa. We are in Buffalo City. It's in the heart of the Sunshine Coast. This little gem has played host to the SA Triathlon Champs over the last three years, and this being the fourth year that it returns to Buffalo City, this year it's going to be a jam-packed event. It's the ATU African Champs, the SA Triathlon Champs, and the ITU World Parrot Triathlon event all in one. So it's a huge event for the city hosting this one. And a lot of the athletes turning up from all around the world to take part in the uh, para-triathlon event, which of course forms part of the very first event in the series. Uh, hope for a top five, um, to get some points for Rio, so it's, uh, it's going to be a hard race. Definitely more competitive than last year and the standard is much higher. Uh, it's my, my first time in South Africa, uh, this is the first ITU event in 2016. And uh, today we have a big deal, a big field because uh, it's a uh, Paralympic years and everyone wants to get a spot for Rio. So we're all here trying to get our spot for, uh, for the Paralympic Games. Weather and swimming conditions looking pretty good. Looking pretty flat at the moment, but I'm a confident swimmer, so I don't mind if the waves pick up a little bit. Um, bike course looks really good. Uh, it's a little bit hilly, um, not overly my favorite type, but uh, once the adrenaline is going. The ITU World Para Triathlon event. This is, of course, the very first of the World Series happening here in Buffalo City. So you've got some of the uh, world's best triathletes taking part in this one, coming from around eight countries. The conditions on the day had Stan Andrews from South Africa really excited. I don't know, it's, not, it's flat and fast. It's, it's nice and calm, which means it's going to be a very interesting swim. It's going to be a fast swim. And then, yeah, um, the new transition is going to be great as well. It's going to be a fast race today. Well, I don't think they could have asked for any better weather conditions. A high of just on 22 degrees as the first of the para-athletes get going. And, uh, these athletes, of course, do a wet start where they walk into the water, just about waist deep, and then the starter gun goes off. They divide it into different categories, all the way from PT5 right through to PT1. Those are the classes they compete in. The first athletes to leave were, of course, the PT5 and PT4s. Uh, they were the first to get going as a group and already the French athlete Arnaud Grandjean making a huge impact on the field here. Yeah, Hector Catalana Lampara from Spain in second place. They do of course a 750 meter swim. Five different groups starting just on three minutes apart in this event. These are the visually impaired athletes. You can see they tethered to uh, a guide who swims with them throughout the entire event. Also during the cycle, they're on a tandem. On the run, they have the guide with them as well that verbally guides them and guides them along the route as well. So that means the guide has got to maintain the pace that the athlete competes at, which makes it a pretty difficult and a very interesting event to watch. So as the athletes in the PT4s now making their way to the beach, a lot of the visually impaired athletes, you can see they stay really close to the guide. The guide will then actually shout commands to them when they get to the boy. She'll say to the athlete, boy, and she'll have to turn left. Of course, they are tethered together, which uh, allows the athlete to kind of feel her way around the course. So the first of the athletes coming out of the water, the Frenchman really leading the way here, closely followed by the Spanish. Keep in mind, this is the very first of the World Para Triathlon season, the first event right here in South Africa. It's a global event that goes to various destinations around the globe. In the uh, PT4 category, Yannick Morceau from France, the man to watch. He was second out of the water. David Hill from the UK just behind him. Alexander Yilchek on the left coming out. Is that Lauren Stedman? It is Lauren Stedman, the first British lady in the PT4 category and out of the water as well. So uh, all of the leaders now on the road. They're going into transition to the bike. That's David Hill from Great Britain. He's a big contender in the PT4 category. 
They now embark on their cycle. Of course, it's a 10 kilometer lap cycle. They do two laps, 20 kilometers in total. These are the first of the PT5 athletes now coming off the water, the visually impaired athletes. You see the harbour wall in the background as we look at the chasing pack. That's one good thing about the Orient Beach. It does tend to shelter the athletes a little bit from the open swell. It does get very bumpy out here. I've seen triathlons at this beach get really, really bumpy with the swells coming in, especially if the wind turns southerly though. So the athletes now heading into transition. This is Melissa Reed from the UK. I think she's looking for a pretty good performance on the bike today. Dutch athlete Daniel Knech getting out on his cycle as well. You can see a lot of international athletes representing their countries here in this uh, ITU World Para Triathlon event. These are some of the PT2 and PT1 athletes now getting out of the water. Big thanks to the Selborne boys for coming out to support these athletes. They've got to be carried out of the water. Some of them then have assistants that help them on the beach. Team manager from Great Britain keeping a watchful eye on proceedings and his team's uh, preparation. Of course, going pretty well. He's got a uh, team in every single category competing today. That's Italian athlete Giovanni Sasso going through last year. He finished just off the podium behind Ryan Taylor from Great Britain. Looking to improve on that this year. South African uh, Dylan De Silva. Last year, this young man took honours in the PT3 category. He's looking to repeat that performance this year. Managed to beat Cyril Lorf to uh, the finish line. Catching up with the leaders on the cycle. This is uh, the Dutchman Jacques van der Berg. Lying in fourth place at the moment. Just behind the Russian Alexander Yilchik. Yilchik's just ahead of him. British athlete uh, David Hill in pursuit of the Frenchman Maxime Morel who by the way led this event for the first lap and then was chased down by Yannick Borso, the Frenchman. So the French really strong competitors in the PT4 category as the rest of the PT1 and PT2 is now getting out of the water, getting ready for their cycle. They're out on the hand cycles and believe me, these guys can really get going. It's sometimes they're even faster than many of the very able athletes on the bicycles. We'll see when they get going at high speed. As the remainder of the PT1 and 2 athletes get going, it was the Frenchman, Maxime Morel, coming in to do his first lap or complete his first lap. Hill was still on a big chase. He really wanted to try and make an impact on the bike, as was Jacques van der Berg. Looking forward to see Alexander Yilchek still in his sights on the route. These are the PT1 athletes getting going at the moment. Giovanni Accenza powering up, of course, last year in the final in Chicago. He finished in fifth place overall in that World Championship event. Also, of course, this is the event that Anton Swanepoel from South Africa takes part in. Hogg at the moment lying in second place just behind Accenza. So there's going to be a lot of competition for Swanepoel in this event. We spoke to him before the event and he says he was looking forward to it. Swanepoel really having his work cut out for him if he wants to repeat his success that he had last year. Coming up past the Esplanade, they arrived with a beautiful ocean on the left-hand side where they came off the swim. 60 athletes in this para-triathlon event. Of course, it is the maximum amount of athletes allowed in the field by the ITU. So it's a pretty well-supported event. Hopefully, we're going to see this event back here in the future, coming part of the World Para-Triathlon Circuit. As we mentioned before, this is, of course, the very first event in the ITU World Para-Triathlon season. They go off to Sydney next, then they uh, head off to Yokohama in Japan. And it's off to Spain and then Strathclyde in the UK as well. South African athletes really looking to shine. They want to try and get as many points as they can here because they do make their qualifiers for the Rio Olympic Games as well. This is Borsho coming into transition. He was the first athlete to get off the bike. The Dutchman Jacques van der Berg in close second place. David Hill dropping back a little bit on the cycle, but he's a very good runner, so he's probably going to make up some time there. It's Borsho gets out of a transition. This is the second Frenchman, Maxime Morel. He's lost a bit of time on the cycle as well, just on two minutes. So uh, Van der Berg, the Dutchman, now trying to add a little bit of pressure in the run. This is the man we're going to have to watch, though. If there's going to be a challenge, it's going to be from Hill, the Brit. He's a very, very strong runner. As he heads out on the run, Morel just behind him. So the Frenchman not far behind. 
the first of the PT5 ladies in transition as well. Strong competition here this year from Britain, Alison Patrick and Melissa Reed taking part. Patrick at this stage leading the PT5 category. Susana Rodriguez from Spain in second place. And this is Yannick Bosso, the man, PT4 athlete out on the route. He's had a really, really strong swim, a very good cycle, managed to pull back some time. Now he's in the lead and he's going to have to now defend this lead out on the run. These athletes basically competing sprint distances here. It's a five kilometer route they follow. Two laps out on the course. These are the first of the men in the uh, PT1 and 2 categories now are getting going. The Spanish having a massive field in this year's event. That's Full Hog getting going on his run. He's just behind Giovanni Acenza. Acenza managing to uh, pull a bit of a gap on him. Five minutes in the cycle. Anton Swanapul, the South African, heading out onto his run as well. So it's all to ride for out there. And it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top. I think Giovanni Acenza might just have a little bit of a lead that's going to be unassailable for Hogg to close the gap down. Spanish PT5 athlete Susana Rodriguez, she's in second place at the moment, just behind Alison Patrick from Great Britain. So she's also trying to close a gap of just on two and a half minutes. Patrick managed to open the gap on her. This is our second place PT4 lady, Gladys Lamosu from France. She's just behind Lauren Stedman. She's being chased by Leve Petra from Hungary. So uh, the ladies also having a massive big fight on their hands in the PT4 category. South African athlete Delinda Silva coming to the turn here. Last year he took the PT3 class. This year I think uh, Francesca, the Brazilian, just giving him a little bit of a run for his money. So uh, Delinda Silva not having it all his own way in the PT3 class this year. The Frenchman Yannick Borso, though he hasn't put a foot wrong in the PT4 category, he closed down a big gap in the cycle and now he's heading to the finish line to take the overall honours in the PT4 class. Very happy to win today because uh, it's the first race of the season and uh, because uh, at the end of the winter you, you don't know where you are uh, of the training and uh, I'm happy because I win. France taking overall victory in PT5 as well. Arnold Grandjean coming through to claim that win. While for the ladies in PT4, it was going to be Lauren Stedman taking the honours. Um, it was really good. Uh, I haven't got like the top leaders in the world here with me, so I knew that it was a, a safe and steady race, and it was actually the race that I could uh, qualify my automatic selection for Rio, so it was a safe and steady race. Great finish for Spain, taking second and third place in PT5. Catalana Rapara and Garcia Serrano coming through in second and third place respectively. But in the PT1s, Giovanni Acenza taking victory. The time was stupid, apart from the vent transversal that gave a little fatigue to the Cellulant bike and to the wheelchair. Nothing like a bit of celebration at the finish line with the Spanish athletes. Let's recap then the overall finishing positions for round one of the ITU World Para Triathlon event. So a fantastic finish by PT1 athlete Giovanni Acenza grabbing first place for Italy. So first place in PT2 going to Ryan Taylor, Mohamed Laha from Morocco in second place. While PT4 is Yannick Morceau, the Frenchman dominating PT4's David Hill from the UK just behind him. While the UK athletes Lauren Stedman and Alison Patrick dominating PT4 and 5. The Buffalo City SA Triathlon Championships was the next event to take place. Commonly known as the Age Groupers, this was by far the biggest field of athletes competing on the day, just on 180 athletes. As the men were the first to set off on the swim, swimming conditions staying pretty flat, not much of a swell coming through. You can see by the aerial footage there, it's looking pretty flat out there. So I think many of the athletes coming from Gauteng it's going to have an absolute wonderful ocean swim. So the first of the men heading around that very first turn, boy. It's a 750 meter course. They've got to do it twice. Of course, they do compete in the Olympic distance for the age groupers. An event like this, taking a lot of hard work by the local planning committee to get together. Without sponsors, an event like this impossible to host for local sponsor Tribal Triathlon. Killian Ryan was very happy with the turnout. Um, every year we see a fantastic crowd, not only of athletes but also of supporters, and this year has proved to be the exact same. Um, we're delighted to be part of a, a sport and an industry that's going from strength to strength in South Africa, and we're, we're very, very proud to be one of the cornerstones of triathlon, hopefully in, in South Africa going forward. Catching up with the age groupers as they uh, are in a transition. 
This year, the same as previous years, Central Gauteng having a huge dominance in the field. The distance for the uh, SA Triathlon Champs in the cycle being an Olympic distance, it's 40 kilometers, three laps of the route that runs along the Esplanade in Buffalo City. The route, of course, run over a total road closure route on the uh, beachfront and then going into the Northeast Expressway. It's part of the highway that's been closed down. By the way, if you do want to catch all things triathlon related, including the results for the Para Triathlon event, you can go to the triathlon.org website. For the age groupers and the SA Triathlon champs, do go to triathlonsa.co.za and catch all the results there. Two local athletes, Brad Burkholz and Craig Ollers, doing battle for the age group category 35 to 39 years old. With the Rio Olympics around the corner, Triathlon South Africa has been putting in a lot of work preparing our team. We'll be taking part in the Rio Olympics. We caught up with Debbie Alexander to tell us a little more. The planning's going well. Um, most of our athletes are here, with the exception of Richard. But uh, after this event, they will do uh, one or two other events, then they'll move to the Cape Town event. And after that, we've got a, a local camp for the um, athletes who we're hoping who are on the long list for for Rio and uh, thereafter some more events and once we know who the team is we'll be having a camp in Europe, uh, one at altitude and then we'll move down uh, to possibly to Spain before we do the move over to Rio. Mm -hmm. Things are going well and um, we're really um, very grateful to you for helping us out with the athletes wetsuits and the kits uh, especially in, uh, between now and, and Rio um, as they're lining up for the camps and the rest of the competitions. Of course, Olympics starting on August the 5th, 2016. Wishing our athletes representing South Africa the best of luck for the event. Hope you perform really well, guys. So as the athletes coming through in the age group of finishers for the uh, Buffalo City SA Triathlon Championships. Nothing like getting something refreshing to drink and then just cooling down by the side of the pool. Maybe getting those uh, tired feet a chance to relax. Last event for the day would be the Buffalo City ATU African Championships. Vian Salwal just coming off a knee injury. Not sure of his condition, but he was really looking forward to the event. Um, yeah, it's not been great for me leading up to it. I've, I've been nursing a knee injury. I've had it to, to tour in my lateral collateral knee ligament. So it's been quite a, quite a bit downtime um, with regards to running. But uh, I got the green light on my net from the doctors, so uh, today will be a good hit out of a test of the fitness. It was going to be a pretty small field as far as the men was concerned. Henry Skuman knew what he had to do. I guess if you get into the lead group on the, after the swim, you, you have a good chance with some strong cyclists to get away, and uh, especially in the wind. And then, yeah, if you're in the front off the bike, you have a good chance to run yourself into a good position. While the guys were in transition getting ready, the ladies were on the beach preparing, getting ready for the star. Gillian Saunders won this event before we caught up with her and asked her about the competition in the field. Um, I think you always got to watch out for everyone. At this stage of the year, you don't know who's in shape and who's not. It's very early on in the year. We've got a lot of time till August, till the game. So um, there are a couple of girls who have raced a few races. Marie Rabi, Lauren Dance, Carlin Fisher. They're always great competitors, so lots of competition. So 11 ladies setting off, it's a pretty small field that's going to make competition even tougher. All of the big names as far as South Africa is here, Marie Rabi, Gillian Saunders, uh, Carlin Fisher and Vicky van Merva as well. Two international athletes competing from Egypt, Fatma Hagras and uh, Melina Wangwingwa from Mauritius in the field as well. And as we get to that first turn boy, it's Marie Rabi just applying the pressure and managing to pull away from the rest of the field. Local girl Cindy Schultz in the field as well. She's been dominating as far as uh, triathlons have been concerned in the junior group, but uh, this year she's competing in the senior category as she did last year. Look at this, it's Marie Robbie, a very powerful stroke. She's completed her two laps. Out of the water she comes, glances over her shoulder quickly and <laughs> You see, she's shaking her head there. She's worked as hard as she can. She's built up a little bit of a lead. Just on 50 seconds as she leaves the water, it's going to give her a little bit of a gap to play with on the bike. If she can extend that lead on the bike, she's going to have a pretty easy run. Here come the chasers. Alexander Quinet leading Gillian Saunders out of that steep little climb next to the Orient Theatre. But Robbie's on her bike and she's going. 
So it's going to be a gauntlet being thrown down here to Saunders and Quinay. Will they be able to make up the gap? So keep in mind, that gap at the moment just on 50 seconds. I think Marie Rabi pretty strong on the bike. She's going to want to try and extend that as much as she can. It's an open road ahead of her. And she pushes down on the pedal. So Saunders and Quinay get out of the transition area almost together. Saunders making her way past the Buffalo Park Cricket Ground now. Karen Grenfell and Lauren Dance coming up into transition. They'll be in a very close, uh, looks like fourth and fifth place. But this lady is stamping her authority on the event pretty early on. Murray Rabi wanting to get the cycle done with. She knows if she can get a good time in the cycle, she doesn't have to do a very hard run. This is the battle for third place at the moment for these athletes together. Cindy Schultz, local lady, leading the way, followed by Dance Fanamarava and Colin Fisher. So the four of them sticking together, the big battle for third place. Robbie leading Saunders in second place. She's coming in for her last lap now. So as the ladies heading to the last lap, the men were getting ready for the start of their Buffalo City ATU African Championship. The field lines up and uh, I'm not quite sure who to put my money on for this event. It's going to be a pretty tight race. You heard Skuman say the fact that the field is small makes it a lot more difficult as they fight their way through the initial surf. High tide coming in this time of the afternoon at the Orient Beach. So they're fighting a little bit of a current as they swim out. But that first boy not too far off. They also be doing two laps of this circuit. 750 meters. And look at this, it was Skuman leading the way around the boy first, then the rest of the field following close behind. This is the chasing four as far as the ladies are concerned in the cycle. Schultz, Dance, Fanamarva and Fisher all still together. They'll be going in for their last lap now. Saunders, oh look at this, Saunders being caught by the chasing four. So Saunders now having to join up with the chasing four. It's going to make a pretty interesting ride as far as this last lap is concerned. So now this group of four has expanded to five riders. Rabi pulling away on the bike. She's on her last lap. When she comes past the finish line again, she's going into transition. And it's going to be a very easy run for her. I don't think they're going to be closing this gap down. She's got a lead of just on 2 minutes 20 seconds as far as the run is concerned. So she doesn't have to push very hard. She came out of the swim with a lead of just on 50 seconds. She's now extended it to just on two minutes as far as the cycle is concerned. So she's been making up time. Here they come now. This is the chasing group. They're all together. Schultz, Dance, Fanamarva, Fisher. And of course, they picked up Saunders on the last lap as well. So it's a group of five ladies all together. And the South Africans really doing well in this group. It's an all South African chasing group. I think ideally Saunders wanted to keep that gap in the cycle, but it's difficult to fight off a chasing group of four riders. They have to do a lot less effort than one single rider. Robbie really managing to stay out. As we catch up with the boys in the swim here, Henry Skuman, he's leading the field in the swim. He's got a nice big gap going here. A gap of just on another big gap, 40 seconds in the swim. So Skuman comes out of the water, the rest of the field having to play catch up here. And they're all together. This is Solwald, Engelbrecht and uh, Mandy Esadik from Morocco. Rikas Kutsia in there as well as is Clinton Gravit. So these are the boys that will be chasing down Henry Skuman as far as the cycle was concerned. But Skuman pretty fast on the bike. He wants to get out there and try and make an impact on the bike. Maybe we see a repeat of what's been happening in the ladies race. The ladies well on the way as far as their run is concerned. Now this is the lady they're chasing, 30-year-old Marie Robbie. She's from Stellenbosch. She wants to try and claim maximum points today in this event. As the guys get going out of transition, this is the chasing group. They're just behind Skumar here. Looks like it's going to be Solwald and Engelbrecht leading the charge out of transition. So skuman has got a lead on the bike of just on a minute 20 seconds at this stage. It's going to be down to these two to make a difference, and they're already breaking away from the rest of the field. Solwald and Engelbrecht, while the ladies are entering the last lap of their run at the moment. So as far as ladies' runs concerned, Saunders consolidating her second place. This is the big fight, though, for third between Fisher and Schultz. And look at this, Cindy Schultz managing to take a position from Carlin Fisher there. 
So on the last lap, Schultz applying the pressure on Fisher, taking a position. But this is Marie Rabi. She's led from start to finish and she's going to take the win. It was quite tough. It was really windy out in the back uh, bike, especially on the way back. But that's the same for everyone. And normally um, in the tougher winning conditions, the stronger athletes do better. And I'm quite a strong across all three. So it definitely played um, to my strengths today. So while the lead ladies can celebrate the victory, the men were on the last lap here. This is the uh, chasing bunch consisting of, it looks like, Mehdi Ascetic from Morocco, Drika Skutsia, Clinton Gravit and Hein van der Merwe. So the four of them trying to close the gap down. Of course, ahead of them, Vian Solwald and Basson Engelbrecht. They were trying to close the gap down to Henry Schumann, but Schumann just holding that gap. They're making a little bit of an impression as far as the bike is concerned. But it's still just on a one-minute lead for Henry Schumann. Schumann coming into transition. Very much repeat of the ladies' race here. Marie Rabi managed to get away early on in the swim. She kept the lead all throughout. And it looks like it's going to be the same here for Henry Schumann. So Schumann into transition. Here come the chasers. Solwald and Engelbrecht. They're just on a minute behind. But uh, I think Schumann might just be able to fend them off unless something happens on the run. As the two of them now heading into transition, I think they're going to be sticking together in the run. Solwald might just be a little bit of a stronger runner than Engelbrecht. He's competed on the course before. He's been out here on the route before, so he knows the route pretty well, knows how to pace himself. Solwald getting out first. Engelbrecht just behind him. So now the chase is on. Solwald's going to try and close the gap down to Skuman, but behind him it's going to be Engelbrecht applying the pressure. Skuman going in he's got to do four laps of this beachfront course here come the chasers this is the group that contains a sadik drikas kutsia and the local boy clinton gravit gravit leads them into transition a sadik there in third place so it looks like they've dropped hein van Merwe from that group this is solwald chasing down skuman and he's managing to make a little bit of an impact on that lead clinton gravit local boy taking part in the elite category now skuman coming around he's got one more lap to go and I don't think anybody's going to catch this young man. Solvold's trying to make an impression. He's got the lead down, but it's not going to be enough. He's been fighting back as hard as he can. This is Mehdi Asik from Morocco. At the moment lying in fourth place. But the win in the category will go to Skuman coming through to take honors. Yeah, I was using my swim to my advantage. There weren't too many athletes in the field, so there weren't, wasn't going to be a, a big group to chase behind. So I used that to my advantage. and. I just try to maintain my lead and I managed to get a few more seconds off the bike and yeah, plan went, went well. Fantastic finish then for uh, Henry Skumon taking first place in the Buffalo City ATU Triathlon African Championships. Great finish for Vian Solwald in second place, while there's Marie Rabi taking honours for the girls ahead of Gillian Saunders. As we bid you farewell from Buffalo City, that concludes our coverage. We wish you an amazing triathlon season. All of the triathlon action was proudly brought to you by Buffalo City, the National Lotteries Commission, Tribal Triathlon and Triathlon South Africa.